Here we're going to show you how to playback video from your DVR or NVR recorder. You need to go to the search menu to start playing back video. Here's one way that I just showed you how to go in, in there. And you can also go to main menu and search. First part you'll see here on the top right is the calendar where you can uh, choose video from to play back. The cells highlighted with a blue background. That means there's a video recording there. Doesn't necessarily mean there's video from every single camera, but it means there is video recording. And in this case, we can go back to December on our recorder and there's video storage there. Here is a listing of the different cameras you have available that you possibly record a video from. In our case, we have a consistent first five cameras and the six, seven, and eight. We sometimes put cameras on there to test. Those are showing up here too, because they've been recorded to at some point. The M means uh, mainstream, and if you click on the letter M, it changes to substream. There are two different types of recording streams that you can have, and depending on how you set your recorder based on our previous videos, whether you are recording mainstream and whether you're also recording substream or not, this will apply as to what type of video pulls up on the timeline. So in this case, if I were to um, click here and toggle the M to S, you'll see that the timeline is changing here. In the substream, I have all green colored video. That means it's regular video. It's continuous or scheduled recording video. When I go back to mainstream, it tells me I've got yellow spots here, which is motion. And then there's green video, which is regular. It's continuous. And then let's talk about here. You've got play forward controls. You got stop, you got play backwards. And then you've got even the ability to toggle frames. Uh, you can actually play back slowly and or fast forward. And uh, in some cases you have smart search, thumbtacks, volume if you have audio. And uh, if you have uh, IVS or video analytic cameras, you can use this rule. We'll explore the, these, uh, this uh, IVS later in a different video. This is a snippet tool. Uh, we'll discuss that on when we in the next video on how to download video. And this is a save tool to save to a USB. The thumbtack actually comes in handy we'll, uh, or a bookmark. It will show you how you can bookmark certain footage and then go back to it when you need to. And uh, you can also display video in a table format and go back to it. So there are different ways of viewing video. The most friendly one is using the timeline and you simply just select the channels you want and then click on the video where you want to play back from and it'll start playing back. And it'll be synchronous depending on, you know, you have motion or continuous. So when the camera channel blacks out like that, I just showed you, it's because it's on motion and where it's playing back there is, in this case, no video being recorded because there's no motion happening. If I go back, you'll see that uh, the camera had sensed someone moving there and that's why it has motion detection footage there. I'm just gonna pause that while I discuss other options. Now, uh, the timeline can also be zoomed into by using a 24 hour view, which is by default. Once you select somewhere on the timeline, you can use the two hour, one hour and 30 minute magnification windows to zoom into points in the timeline at those increments. Here, uh, it just tells you what the current state is. I'm in pause mode, so that's why it's saying pause here. And here are the different things you can toggle. On the timeline, you can view different types of video recording that's been done. Either you can just view everything. You have to stop the video to select and deselect these, by the way. So I'm gonna stop it. And you can uncheck everything and choose to just play back only video that was recorded on the regular schedule, which is um, either calendar-based or 24-7 recording. And then alarm is rarely done because you have to tie in a external PIR motion sensor to record um, alarm-based inputs. And most DVRs and most consumers are not using that feature. The motion, this is using a camera or video-based motion detection to capture changes in pixels on the picture and start recording. So in this case, our uh, video recorder sensed that there was someone moving here. So if I zoom in, pause, you'll see that it's only noticing motion happening on this one channel. Now, if I were to switch channels five and four, I have to stop first. You can also stop by right-clicking. 
if I were to change the stream and play back there. And zoom in. You'll see that um, in this channel, I don't have um, a motion event occurring. In fact, in our configuration, we only have motion enabled on the mainstream, and then we have the substream being recorded continuously. You can also choose to either play in sync mode or not. So for example, if you uncheck that, and let's say I am playing back continuously, I can play back channels at different times and allows me to have complete freedom of where the cursor is when playing back. And here you see every camera is on a different uh, time. So these are some simple basic steps on how to view footage on your DVR. Now let's say we want to go to a motion event. In this case, I want to look at our front door. And I see that the green here again means recording all the time. I'm going to magnify that to a two hour window. And I want to see what's happening on the front door. So what I can do is the yellow, as I said before, are motion events. I'm going to click on there and jump to those spots in the timeline. And you can see that there are things moving here. That's why it's detecting motion. There's someone here it's detecting motion. There's someone here it's detecting motion again. I can again go into 24 hour view and go back to an earlier point in the timeline. Here it's showing me something happening there. Here it's playing video from that point. And we see somebody coming up the door. So the motion detection is very helpful in being able to skip to points you want video from. If I go back here and I select Substream, you can see there's video in green for the whole day. Now, another thing you can do is when you're viewing one camera, it's really easy to digitally zoom in. You simply draw a rectangle by clicking the left click, the regular click on the mouse and drawing a rectangle and you can zoom in and you can even pan the video to see what was happening. Now let's try this in a multi-camera view. So here we have someone approaching I can draw a rectangle and zoom in to that point of interest. I can also skip around and go to that point of interest if I want. And let's see here. So I can hit pause and then draw a rectangle. Right clicking will allow you to exit the pan mode if that's something you have happening. You can then draw a rectangle and zoom into an area of interest. Let's say you want to look at a delivery that's happening. You can zoom in here and pan and see what was happening there. And this will let you be able to zoom in, see how many packages came in, etc. Right click, zoom out, right click, zoom out. If you want to view one camera in full screen, you can double click on that channel multiple times and then you can exit the zoom window by again double clicking on the same channel. It'll go to full screen mode and then come back into four quadrant mode. So the pan, this is the hand shows you that it's a pan mode. You have to double click. You can exit by right clicking if you want to stop the video. It'll either take you back to the quadrant or you right click one more time, it'll exit. Now let's look at the uh, playback function here on the cameras. Let's look at our shipping process. I'm going to zoom in to a point in the timeline. And let's say there's something happening here that you want to basically mark as a bookmark. You can hit, it has to be in play mode, and then you can use the thumbtack to add a point of interest. and give it a name. Now, the important thing to remember is you have to have that one cell highlighted. You know, I have this first channel highlighted, it, it bookmarked that one. If you want another channel highlighted, you want to make sure you clicked on that screen and then hit the bookmark again, gave it a different name, hit OK. Now, if you want to go back and play those bookmarks, 
what you need to do is for a stop video, you can hit stop or right click and then select the day you think you've had a bookmark on and try to play them by using the bookmark function. It'll alert you that you can only do it on a single channel. So I know that I bookmark something on channel two perhaps, hit the bookmark, I was wrong. Let's go to channel three. Ah, this is my first bookmark. I had it on channel three and now it's playing it back from that point on where I set a point of interest. Go back. If you try to press back and you can't go back, you have to stop. Then select the next channel, hit bookmark. I see it here. And then if I double click it, it'll play from that point on. You can right click to exit. Now the, the mainstream substream feature is very important because some people like to record on motion only in high resolution and substream all the time so they have video continuity without any gaps in the footage. Sometimes what happens is if motion doesn't capture something, doing 24-7 capture allows you to zoom in to a certain point of view where you want to be able to get more detail. So let's try that. So we have very low res recording happening here on this channel. And you can see here that it's easy to pull up multiple channels really. Right click. And when you do six or more, five or more cameras, it all consolidates to one timeline. And depending on if you have video there, it'll highlight video on those channels. Now, when you go back to the search option, the order of playback is determined by how you selected the channels. So I selected them sequentially from one through four. Let's say I do it again, but I select in reverse. It'll play back in that same sequence that I selected them at. So now my channel for the front door, it's last. So this does let you select channels in the order you wanna play them back in for easy review. Just like so. Another way to play back video is using the table function. If you've selected a certain channel, it's only for single channels, by the way, and let's do our packing station. Hit the table. It tells you when it sensed motion. The type M means motion. Double click. It'll go to that point in time. There's a pre-record window with the way motion detection works. We have 30 seconds pre-record set, so that's why before the foot came into the view, it started a little bit before that to be able to show that what happened before the motion occurred just in case it missed anything. And you can use motion detection to reduce the time of recording, save hard drive space, and only have the events of interest recorded. So again, I'm gonna go on another channel, hit that, and be able to skip to that point in time when there, motion, there is motion happening. And here we see a precursor to somebody actually walking in. Here we go. Now let's say you have a point of interest in your video where you don't want it getting deleted. Let's say it's for evidentiary purposes. You can actually press the lock button here and it'll lock the file from being overwritten when the DVR tries to recycle hard drive space. And you can press the lock info button to view the start and end time, the size, and also unlock the video should you decide to later let it be overwritten. So we've summed up pretty much how to use the calendar view, the playback window, the timeline, the playback controls, what these icons mean at the bottom, and what the M and the S mean and how to select channels. The only thing we've left now is the playback speed. So now I'm going to show you the playback speed options. Here we have two channels I have selected to monitor a process, and I'm going to zoom in fine tune the time, space in the timeline I want to play back from. And let's say I, I want to see what's happening here in an order being packed. 
I can basically use the forward function to fast forward and play back. And you can play back up to 16x depending on the resolution of the cameras you have. So you can do 2, 4, 8, 16. Um, these are 4 megapixel cameras. Now let's try doing slow play. So this will actually slow down the video playback so you can actually see what's happening and you can go down all the way up to 1 16th. You can also do reverse play and play backwards. And what it will do is um, play back frame by frame. And here notice that it's in sync mode. Now if I want to manually control frames happening, you have to be in full screen view. You have to stop the video, go back in that point of the timeline. Hit the pause button and then hit the frame option. And this will let you go back and forth as to the motion events, or there's a frame you're going from here, let's say beginning with motion event, it's gonna go back to the last one. So we're here on channel two. It's going from this point on the timeline to the last time motion was sensed. It's really as easy as that. Thank you for watching.